In our previous video, we talked about the problem with singular points and that we cannot find a power series solution that converges to the solution to the differential equation, which begs the question, how do we find a series solution for a singular point? Well, there's several ways depending on our context, and the one we're going to take a look at in this course is what is called the Frobenius method. And that is to make a small adjustment to our differential equation solution. We started with the solution y equals the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n times x to the n. The small adjustment that Frobenius made that actually works quite well is he added a plus r to the exponent. And so now we have an equation with two unknowns, the c sub n that we already know how to find and the r. Well, what's nice about this is we can still take derivatives. y prime is equal to, now here's what's interesting, very different than a power series. With a power series, the first term was a constant. Here, the first term is not a constant, so it does not go to zero. It does not disappear. So we have n going from zero to infinity, bringing the exponent out front of n plus r times c sub n x to the n plus r minus one. And then the second derivative, still following kind of the same pattern. The first term is no longer zero, so it's still going from zero to infinity of n plus r times our exponent of n plus r minus 1 times c sub n times x to the n plus r minus 2. And what's nice about this minor adjustment is solving it will result in what we call the indicial equation. of r times r minus 1 plus a constant which we'll call p naught times r plus another constant which we'll call q naught times c sub 0 x to the r. And we can find a solution for r by setting that equal to 0. Actually, when we do that, we're going to end up with a quadratic in terms of r. We'll have an r squared term, which means we're going to get our two possible solutions for r. We'll call them r1 and r2. And what's really important to note is that if r1 and r2 do not differ by an integer, in other words, we have the number 7 and the number 8 thirds, those differ by a fraction, not an integer, then we will be able to find two independent solutions now if r1 and r2 differ, do differ by an integer Maybe the answers are 7 and negative 2. Those differ by the integer of 9. We will get at least one independent. I spelled independent wrong up above, didn't I? We'll get at least one independent solution. And where we're going to get that one independent solution from is we're going to use the larger value. Now the problem is we won't have the full solution for the second order differential equation because we only have one solution. And so in that case, we would need an alternative method to find it. And we're not going to be able to get to that alternative method in this course. So for now, we're going to focus on case A, where the two roots do not differ by an integer. 
Now a little extra caveat that we might want to add to this number four is if we have extra terms then that constant the constant coefficient is zero. All right, let's take a look at this Frobenius method actually working out in a real example. Let's solve 2x squared y double prime plus 3xy prime minus the quantity x squared plus 1 times y equals 0. And what I want to notice in here is if we were to divide by 2x squared to have 1 in front of the y double prime, we would end up with x in the denominator on the middle and last terms, which means x equals 0 is a singular point. And so we cannot do a power series solution to this differential equation. It will not work. And so what we'll do is we'll use the Frobenius method by changing the exponent slightly and making it n plus r. So now we will have 2x squared times y double prime. Well, we said y double prime was the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus r times n plus r minus 1 times c sub n x to the n plus r minus 2 plus 3x times y prime, which is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus r times c sub n x to the n plus r minus 1 minus x squared plus 1 times y, which we said was the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n plus r, and all of that equals 0. From here, it's going to start to feel very similar to what we did before with the power series method. First, I'm going to take these coefficients out front of the sums and put them into the sums. When I do, we get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n plus r times n plus r minus 1 c sub n x to the n plus r and the squared and the minus 2 uh, subtract out to 0 plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 3 times n plus r times c sub n x to the n plus r adding 1 to the exponent, plus, and I'm going to make two terms out of this as both parts distribute through, not losing track of the negative. We're going to have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n, x to the n plus r plus 2, and that's a negative because that negative's coming in, plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of just a negative 1, c sub n, x to the n plus r, is equal to zero. Now we've got to try and get all the exponents on x to match. We have n plus r, n plus r, n plus r, and an n plus r with a plus two on it. So to get the exponents to match, we'll subtract two from the n's, which means we have to add two to the index. And when we do that, we'll end up with the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2 n plus r times n plus r minus 1 c sub n x to the n plus r plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 3 n plus r c sub n x to the n plus r plus the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity, there it is, of negative c sub n minus 2 x to the n plus r plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative c sub n x to the n plus r equals 0. So now what's going to happen, we've got the exponents matching, now we need the index to match. And remember we've got factories that open up at midnight, 0, and another factory that opens up at 2 which means we need the, all the other factories to run for two hours for n equals 0 and n equals 1 before we can say all the factories are open. So uh, let's run the first factory here for n equals 0. 
we get 2 times r times r minus 1, c sub 0, x to the r. And then we run it for the 1 o'clock hour, plus 2 times uh, 1 plus r, times 1 plus r minus 1 is just r, c sub 1, x to the n plus 1, or sorry, r plus 1. The second factory then is going to run for 2 hours, plugging 0 and 1 in. When we plug 0 in, we get 3r c sub 0 x to the r. When we plug 1 in, we get plus 3 times 1 plus r c sub 1 x to the n plus 1. The third factory is closed for these first two hours. It doesn't start until 2. So the last factory becomes negative c sub 0 x to the r minus c sub 1 x to the r plus 1. Plus, and then we've got, moving on to the next line, all the factories are running from 2 to infinity at the same time. And what's nice is each factory has an x to the n plus r we can factor out, which leaves behind 2 times n plus r times n plus r minus 1 c sub n plus 3 times n plus r c sub n minus c sub n minus 2 minus c sub n, and all of that equals zero. It doesn't even fit on one line, it's so long. We're going to focus our attention first on the constants that we pulled out. We'll look at each one separately. First, we're going to look at the x to the r's. We've got an x to the r here, here, and here. Notice they all have an x to the r c sub 0 on them. So I'm going to factor that out, the x to the r c sub 0. And what's left is 2r times r minus 1 plus 3r minus 1. Just looking at those three highlighted yellow terms. And what's nice here is we can set that equal to 0. That factor that we just found is our indicial equation that we talked about earlier. We can use it to solve for r. We have 2r squared minus 2r plus 3r is plus 1, r minus 1, which means it factors to 2r times r. And if we do uh, r plus 1 and a 2r minus 1, that means r is equal to a positive 1 half and a negative 1. That's very important. We have solved for our r's. The second piece we look at is all the other terms that came out. Those coefficients are probably going to go to 0. So we've got three other terms that came out. And the only way to make those work, because we've already set what r is, and x can be anything within the radius of convergence. The only thing we can do is we factor out the c sub 1 x to the n, n plus 1. That should be an r plus 1. It's a minor error. If we factor out the c sub 1 x to the r plus 1 times what's left is 2 r plus 1 plus 3 times r plus 1 minus 1. Since we've already set what r is equal to on this first set of equations, or this first indicial equation, we can't set r to make this equal to 0. We can't set x, because x can vary within the radius of convergence. So the only possibility that exists is c sub 1 equals 0, which means you can kind of guess what's going to happen, is all the odd terms are going to go to 0. Now that we've established that, 
Now we can take a look at the big thing here inside the sum to try and establish my pattern for the C sub n's. Again, much the same way we did with our power series. We're going to solve for the larger subscript. In this case, the larger subscript is going to be C sub n, which is larger than n minus 2. But the first thing I'm going to do with that is I'm going to factor out the C sub n. And when I do, I'm left with 2 times n plus r times n plus r minus 1 plus 3 times n plus r minus 1. Then we also have a minus c sub n minus 2. And we know we want to set that equal to 0. Let's see, what can we do to clean this up? What if I put this little n plus r in parentheses? And we distributed the 2n plus r as a block onto both terms in there. That'll give us 2 times n plus r squared. Then we'll have a minus 2 times n plus r, along with a plus 3 gives us a plus 1 n plus r. And then minus 1. equals 0. I'm going to keep playing inside here just because I want to clean that up and we want to factor that. So I have a c sub n times, and if I factor that, minus c sub n minus 2 equals 0, I'll have a 2 times n plus r times an n plus r, and a 1 and a 1, we make that a plus 1 and a minus 1. And we're going to leave it like that for now and solve for that c sub n, which we can get by adding the c sub n minus 2 to both sides and then dividing by our two factors that we just found, 2 times n plus r minus 1 times an n plus r plus 1. And this then becomes my function for c sub n. Now, we are going to solve for our pattern, but we have to solve for it considering both cases for r. We need to remember that r has two values that it's equal to. And so we're going to consider each case separately. So we'll look at case number one where we look at the r equals 1 half case. With case number one, I'm going to change the c's to a's because I don't want to get the different cases mixed up when I have constants in both. They are different constants. So we're going to have case one, we're going to change them to a sub n's. And when we do case two with the negative one, we'll change them to b sub n's. That way we don't get them confused. So if r equals 1 half, our a sub n, using our formula we just found, is a sub n minus 2 over 2 times n plus r, which is 1 half, minus 1, times n plus r, which is 1 half, plus 1, which gives us a sub n over a sub n minus 2, sorry, over, if I distribute the 2 through, we have 2n, half of 2 is 1, minus 1 is 0, times n plus 3 halves, and what I can also do is I'm going to take that 2 and actually multiply the 2 by both parts to completely clear out the fraction, and so I have a sub n minus 2 over n times 2n plus 3. All right, now we're ready to run through our pattern and see what our pattern is going to come up with for our a sub n. Our series, if we look up at our series, started at n equals 2. So we'll say n equals 2 gives us a sub 2 is equal to and I always treat the a sub n minus 2 separately. So we have 1 over n, which is 2, 
times 2n plus 3, 4 plus 3 is 7, times our a sub n minus 2, which is an a sub 0. Now, as expected, when we do n equals 3, we'll end up with 1 over 3 times 6 plus 3 is 9, but then we're going to multiply by a sub 1. And we said earlier that our odd terms, the c sub 1 up above, that's equal to 0. So all the odds go to 0. So we'll skip that. And let's go to the next even. n sub 4, we've got a sub 4 is equal to 1 over n, which is 4, times 4 plus, times 2 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, times the previous term, which is an a sub 0 over 2 times 7. When n equals 6, a sub 6 is 1 over 6 times, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15 times the previous term which is a sub 0 over let's put them in order I guess 2 times 4 times 7 times 11 and we're trying to establish a pattern for a sub n. I'm going to delete the n3 just so that we have a little bit of space to work here as we look at trying to establish our pattern. What I want to notice is we've really got two factors, and so those factors are going to be built separately. So if I break them down by their two factors, the n is giving me all these evens, times 4 times 2, 6 times 4 times 2. And then the other factors are 7 times 11 times 15. And we see that pattern building up above, too. We've got 4 times 2, and then a 7 times 11 times 15. Oop, no 15 on this one, sorry. And then finally up above, we've got a sub 0 over just the 2, and then just the 7. What I want to notice is we're multiplying by the evens counting down. If I were to factor out a 2 from each of those evens, what they're going to be multiplied by is a 3, a 2, and a 1. We recognize that as 3 factorial. So I could write this as a sub 0 over 2 raised to the third power, because we factored out 3 2s, times a 3 factorial, and then we just have the visual pattern of 7 times 11 times 15. We can see that's going up by 4s. We can do the same thing, factoring out a 2 from the middle uh, a sub 4 leaves behind a 2 times 1. So that's really a sub 0 over 2 squared times 2 factorial times 7 times 11. And that pattern's going to hold true. If I factor out a 2, we have 2 to the first times 1 factorial times 7. So putting that all together, what I see is for our pattern is we've got this a sub 0 divided by, and actually, we're not going to do a sub n. We're going to do a sub 2n because we've got even pow, even subscripts. We're only looking at the evens. The odds all went to zero. Then we have a 2 to the n power. Remember, n is half of the subscript. So we had 2 to the third, and our formula becomes 2 to the n, times an n factorial. And then the last bit, we're just going to kind of establish the pattern. So I'm going to write down 7 times 11 times 15 times, and then we keep multiplying down the pattern until we reach our stopping number. And so we're going to do an expression for the stopping number. Since we're increasing by 4 each time, our slope is 4, we just have to find the y-intercept of where it stops, 
plugging 3 in, 4 times 3 is 12, but we want to go up to 15, so we need to add an additional 3. And that's the stopping point. And so with case 1, we have our y sub 1 is equal to, we can factor the a sub 0 out, times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the, we just had even exponents, so we're going to do 2n. we got to make sure we add the r of 1 half over 2 to the n times n factorial times 7 times 11 times 15 times 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 all the way out to 4n plus 3. And that is our first solution for our differential equation. But we need two solutions for our differential equation. That's what brings us to case two. We need two linearly independent solutions to have a second order differential equation solved completely. Well, we had another value for r that we haven't solved for yet. r was negative one. And if you remember from up above, we said c sub n was equal to c sub n minus 2 over 2 times n plus r minus 1 times n plus r plus 1. So we can call this now our b sub n, because we're dealing with a different r, we're going to have a different constant, is equal to b sub n minus 2 over 2 times n plus r, which is a negative 1, minus 1 times n plus r, which is a negative 1, plus r, or plus 1. Simplifying that, we get b sub n minus 2 over 2n minus 3. And then the minus 1 plus 1 subtract out to 0, so we're just times n. And in much the same way, we're going to run through and find a pattern for the b sub n's. Our series still starts at n equals 2, so b sub 2 is equal to, treating with a 1 in front there, we have a 1 over, 2, two times 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, times our n of 2, times the previous term, that b sub 0. Now again, we're going to find the same thing's going to happen. The odds are all going to go to 0, so we don't have to calculate those again. We'll jump right to n equals 4. b sub 4 is equal to 1 over 2n minus 3. 8 minus 3 is 5 times our n of 4 times our previous term, which is 1 or b sub 0 over 1 times 2. Then n equals 6, b sub 6 is equal to 1 over 2n minus 3, 12 minus 3 is 9, times 6, times our previous term, which is a b sub 0, over 5, times 4, times 2, times 1. Now again, we're going to try and group things together by factor. So what we really have here is a b sub 0 over, there's a... Um, let's start with the bottom number of 1 times 5 times 9. And then there's also a 2 times 4 times 6. And so we kind of see the same pattern emerging where we can factor out a 2 out of each of these terms, giving us 2 cubed times 1 times 2 times 3. A factorial is growing out of it. So we have b sub 0 over 1 times 5 times 9 times 2 to the third times 3 factorial. And that same pattern can be seen all the way up. In the term before it, we've got b sub 0 over 1 times 5 times a 2 squared times 2 factorial. And in the term before that, we've got a b sub 0 over 1 times 2 to the first times 1 factorial. 
And so when we want to express our general term b sub n, b sub n is going to be that b sub 0 divided by, we don't really need the 1 in there. So we're going to start our counting series as 5 times 9 times. We can see the next one's probably going to be 13 times, 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 all the way up to where it stops. We've got 4n. And again, remember our n's, because we're only dealing with the even terms, we're treating them like a 3, like a 2, and like a 1. 4 times 3 is 12. So to go from 12 to 9, we had to subtract 3. So 4n minus 3 times 2 to the third, or 2 to the n, times our n factorial, which leads us to our second linearly independent solution for y. y, if I factor out that b sub 0, is b sub 0 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n plus our r minus 1 all over 5 times 9 times 13 times 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 a 4n minus 3 times 2 to the n times n factorial. And that's our y2, our second solution for y times our second constant b sub 0. Now one thing I have to be careful of with both of these, and I didn't really account for it either time, so let's go back to our first case, is we need to make sure the pattern still holds when n is equal to 0. When n is equal to 0, let's stick this in this little side, when n equals 0, our formula becomes a sub 0 over 2 to the 0 times 0 factorial, and this series doesn't really make sense, starting from 7 and going up. So what we're going to have to do instead is, since the n of 0 does not work, we're going to pull off the first term. So we'll still have our a sub 0 factored out, and we're going to pull off the first term, which is, one, which is when n is equal to 0, we end up with x to the 1 half power plus, and then n ranging from 1 to infinity. Because when n is equal to 0, we just want to have the a sub 0 term, which does not follow the pattern. And so we'll see the same thing down below. When we consider the n equals 0 case, the formula doesn't really make sense. And so instead, what we will do is we'll say our y2 is equal to our b sub 0 times, and we'll pull the first term out. And when n equals 0, we have x to the negative 1 plus, and then our series runs from now 1 to infinity. So a minor adjustment. We should have checked for it from the beginning. The first term may not follow the pattern, or the pattern may not be well-defined, and so we have to be careful with that. All right. So the moment we've all been waiting for, our general solution to our differential equation. Remember, the differential equation we started with was 2x squared y prime prime plus 3xy prime minus x squared plus 1 times y equals 0. We now have the solution for this, which is y equals, well, basically y1 plus y2, a sub 0 times x to the 1 half plus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of x to the 2n plus 1 half 
over 2 to the n times n factorial times 7 times 11 times 15 times 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 all the way up until the pattern ends at 4n plus 3 plus our b sub 0 times an x to the negative 1 plus the sum as n goes from 0, nope, 1. We pulled the first term off. n goes from 1 to infinity of x to the 2n minus 1 all over 2 to the n times n factorial. Putting that 2 to the n n factorial up front just to be inconsistent. Times 5 times 9 times 13 times 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 until the pattern ends at 4n minus 3. And that beautiful solution converges to the solution of our differential equation. Now it's your turn to practice these. Go ahead and take a look at them in the book, and we will see you in class for questions.